Hey, what's up, you guys? Um, I want to talk about this movie called Concussion. You guys, it came out in um, 2015 where uh, Will Smith played a doctor named Dr. Bennett. I can't pronounce his last name. It's O-M-A-L-U. And he is um, a, what do you call it, a neuropathologist along with being a um, forensic doctor. And so in... Um, this movie that uh, Will Smith played in, uh, the doctor was, uh, he discovered, excuse me, he was from Nigeria, and he kept hearing reports of ex-NFL players, you know, turning the gun on themselves, killing themselves, causing harm to other people. And so what he did was he started studying the corpses of these dead ex-football players, and I don't mean no disrespect by saying it like that, but... Um, he ended up bringing this information that he found by studying and dissecting the brain, doing autopsies and things of that nature, and finding out that the brains of these um, ex-football players, once he went inside, were, like, really damaged badly. So he was trying to bring this information forward to the NFL. However, the NFL came against him and thought that he was just trying to be on some type of slander campaign when he was really trying to figure out what's going on with all these men that are killing themselves. You know, you had one guy that chased his children and his wife around the house with a knife, saying that voices told him to kill them, but he ended up killing himself. You had another guy that was living homeless. He ended up killing himself. You had another football player that ended up drinking, um, what do you call it, uh, antifreeze and killed himself. You had another um, NFL player that went to a fellow football player, and they both discussed that, you know, they were having similar thought patterns and things of that nature. But because the one didn't know how to help him, he ended up killing himself. And the other guy ended up killing himself. There, there was just so many football players that ended up killing themselves. And so he wanted to bring this information forward. But the uh, NFL sent forth the FBI to threaten to deport this doctor. And then they you know, followed his wife. She ended up crashing and losing her baby. So he got to his wit's end where he just said to hell with it. And he packed up and he moved out here to someplace called Lodi, California, where he continued on, you know, his, um, his, uh, research. And so, you know, he got a lot, he had a lot of struggles, you guys trying to bring this information forth. And I know you said, why are you telling me all this? Well, I'm trying to give you an understanding of what's going on prior to me telling you about the um, the the um, multiple murder that this ex NFL ball player did, and this ties into it because they believe that he was suffering also from CTE because the the family said before he left and began to play um, pro football, he was the kindest, gentlest, humblest, fun loving guy that there ever was to be. But after he finished playing football. During his his uh, five year play, um, he suffered multiple concussions and never got help for it. And they said that they was trying to get him some help for it. But if you really want to help somebody, you will go to the ends of the world to help them. You won't just offer them help and not do anything. You know, you will set up a prevention or intervention, however you say it, and you will go out and you will try to help these people. So this guy shot. Um, Two um, air conditioner guys from a company called GSM. He shot a husband and a wife. The husband was a doctor um, at the at an um, emergency um, in uh, Rock Hill, South Carolina. And then he shot uh, two children. One was nine, and the other was five. And so then later on, he ended up turning the gun on himself. So that made you know six people. But there was one particular guy named Shook, I believe his name is, but he was in the hospital still fighting for his life. But this Saturday, he succumbed to his injuries and he passed away. And he and his co-workers were both 38 years old. And um, it was just really a sad, sad situation because this dude probably did suffer from CTE and nobody ever knew it. So now that's why the 
some of the family wants to have his brain um, checked to see if he did indeed suffer from, <coughs> excuse me, CTE, which it does sound like the same thing because, like they said, he was bizarre. He wasn't the same. Some of the things that he was doing didn't make sense to the family. So this doctor, Dr. Bennett, you know, um, because of his research and all the stuff that he went through, you know, he was able to come up with a, um, a diagnosis on what's going on with these football players, you know, so it's really a sad story that, you know, these football players suffer and we pay, you know what, we pay for these, these games, we pay for these contact sports, we pay for this stuff. And we think it is kind of entertaining, but at the same time, we don't really understand what happens to these people after the fact, what's going on with their life after the football uh, life is over, you know, then what do they do on their day-to-day -day living? You know, they said that there was a there was one guy uh, at the beginning of the year, he was some type of athlete, and it was like an interracial relationship, and he ended up being violent with the woman, and everybody came down on him and started calling him a white supremacist and all types of things, and what people did not understand is this dude was also a um, athlete. So instead of like going off on him, they should have, the first thing they should have done was try to scan him to see if he suffered from CTE in any type of way or any cap, any capacity. And if he did suffer from CTE because of the things that he said to her and the way that he treated her, it sounded like something definitely was going on within his brain. And he probably couldn't understand why he had so many mood swings because she was like one minute he'll be sweet, the next minute he would just go off. So that to me is beginning signs of CTE. And I think instead of people locking up these athletes and putting them in jail for displaying a, a act of violence, I think that they should first scan them to evaluate them to see that they have CTE. And if they do suffer from CTE, then there will be a better understanding that um, why they're acting out and why they're being violent. You know, then it'll give the family some closure and some understanding and so, like, the young lady, very beautiful young lady, you know, he ended up beating her up. And so, I think that they should really start scanning each and every ex or every pro ball player, every non-pro ball player. If they have a history of violence, they need to automatically scan them and find out if they did play any contact sports, like in high school or anything like that. Have you ever had any, uh, excuse me, have you ever had any concussions? And if they say, yeah, and they scan, they'll find out, hey, this person suffers from um, the beginning stages of CTE. What are the cures? What are the diagnoses? What are the treatments? You know, so this is not giving them excuse for their behavior. But you got some guys just are downright buttholes. That's why I said you need to scan their brains. Anybody that's ever played sports, and especially you knew that they weren't that way before, don't just overlook it. You know, make a comment, hey, you know what, before you uh, had that um, head injury, you didn't act this way. Maybe we should go to the doctor and have a scan done, find out if we can get that CTE scan done to see if there's any, you know, onset stages of you having this disease. And, and a lot of times you, you would be shocked to find out how many people, even not in football, but car accidents, uh, slip and falls, you know, fighting, just regular fighting, somebody getting knocked out in the streets fighting with someone, you never know. And this whole, this this one, this person just totally changes out of nowhere. So these are some of the things that I think should be a big concern when you go to a doctor office. I think they should start including that when they go in for physicals um, or just seeing your doctors. Have you been hit in the head, have you suffered a concussion? And if you don't know what a concussion is, have you suffered a blow to the head or a high impact or have you had a car accident, a slip and fall? Some of these questions need to be asked because a lot of times you will be shocked to know that a lot of these people have actually had trauma done to their head, their bodies, all types of stuff done. And even being children, when you get parents that are abusive, you know, the parent beat the kid and caused them trauma. You And then you wonder why this person turns into a serial killer. You wonder why this person turns into a murderer. You know what I'm saying? So, you guys, that's why I wanted to bring this to you. Because this all plays in together. 
you, we really need to start doing more research. We really need to start asking more questions in the medical field, you know, in the psychiatric field, any field that has to do with people. We need to start asking these questions, you know, and especially in law enforcement, because a lot of these law officers, you never know, they might have been football players and been knocked out, knocked upside the head. And then when they get out on the field, it could be the onset of, you know, CTE of some sort. And I'm not any way giving any excuse to anything. So don't think, oh, she's just giving it. No, you would be really surprised if you really sat down and thought about it. This is something really to think about. How many people in this world has been busting the head accidentally multiple times, slipped and fall, fell and hit their heads? People been in car accidents, you know, something fell and hit somebody in the head and or somebody turned around and elbowed you by accident or you were playing sports and got hit in the head by the ball or somebody accidentally kicked you in the head or somebody punched you in the head. Somebody was playing with something and it exploded and hit you in the head. Any type of head trauma needs to be on all these doctor um, charts when they ask you questions about your history. Not just the um, diabetes, um, asthma, heart disease, glaucoma, diabetes. I said that, um, you know, all these different things, all these arthritis. You know, they, they need to ask more questions, especially when it comes to trauma, because you would be surprised at how many people will answer, yes, yes, I actually did. Um, I actually did. Um, suffered trauma to my head when I was younger. Yes, I was in a coma. Yes, I had a concussion. You would be so surprised. Have you been hit in the head? Yes, I have. You would be so surprised, you guys, that the level of people that are suffering from, um, you know, head trauma and have had concussions and that displays violence. So, like I said, I believe that maybe this guy suffered from CTE and he couldn't handle it, and the voices were telling him to kill the first people that he saw, and he happened to stum stumble upon the house of Dr. Leslie and his friends, you know, his workers and, and his family. So, you know, this is a tragic story, and you guys, I just pray that, you know, there is closure. I pray that the truth is known, the truth gets out there, and that they can figure out what led to this, you know, horrendous, horrific crime, you know. And I really don't believe by any means that this guy just decided, oh, guess what? I'm going to go out and do this today. You know, I don't think that that was the case. So, you guys, until next time, you know, start asking questions to your family members as well. And your friends, have you ever been hit in the head? Have you ever been um, knocked unconscious? Have you ever had a concussion? Start asking people these questions. And then if they answer you, yes, you know, just tell them, let's set up an appointment, you know, and see if there's been any traumatic brain damage or anything, or is there any slight brain damage, you know, especially if you know that this person is changed from, from being this sweet person to being moody, you know what I'm saying? So just, let's just look out for our loved ones and our friends, because a lot of these crimes are happening because we don't know the extent of people's life beyond, you know, just asking them about diseases. There could be some concussions going on and people could be suffering from CTE. That's all I'm saying. I'm not making no excuse for nobody at all, point blank, period. You know what I'm saying? Even people that have been in hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes and windstorms and all types of stuff, falling off boats and, you know, uh, playing volleyball and things of that nature. You think that that ball is an innocent ball, but anything that's hitting you in your head, like straight contact flesh to uh, object contact that's still dangerous you know some people are spiking the ball off of their head that's still dangerous you know you're running around and just slapping your friend in the back of the head for laughs you don't know you shift the person's brain and it slams forward you have to be careful you can't be slapping kids in the head people think that that's cute that's not cute you're causing damage to people you know just because we have the skull you got to remember the brain is very, very delicate still. Okay. So you guys, um, you take care of yourself and I hope that this will help someone. So like I said, get those questions out there and start asking your loved ones, you guys, 
if they're have if they've had any head trauma or anything accidents or anything in the past because I know I've had a few accidents and lots of times I have headaches and I just have to get to myself but I had my brain scan, so, you know, it's just the normal old stuff, okay? So, you guys, you take care. Uh, love each and every one of you. Be good. And if you have any um, questions that you want me to answer, such as, you know, ask me. Because um, I wanted to start um, doing, like, people emailing me in. I already did one email where somebody emailed me some information. And I'm trying to see how to release that information I kept going over. I recorded that thing like 15 different times, and I still can't seem to get it right. But I'm going to try to drop um, that video soon. Anyway, I've done multiple, multiple stories, you guys. But I have been so busy doing other things. So some of the videos that I will release, you're going to be like, this is a late story. Yeah, but I've been really busy as well. So until next time, you guys, I love you guys. You be good. Hit that uh, like button, that post notification bell, and subscribe to my channel. I would love for you to be a part of the family. Until next time, God bless. Goodbye.